Hey friend, this question comes in the form of an email from Josh. He says, Pomac, I have enjoyed watching all your episodes and reading your articles. Love the music. Oh, thank you so much. By the way, that music is available for purchase on Amazon Music or Apple Music. I'll put the link in the description just in case you want to, you know, I don't know. He says, my wife and I are just getting into homesteading slash farming and are moving on some land in the next few months. As we prepare the lot and home, we have seen many signs of deer on the property. Oh, no. What is the best way to keep deer out of the garden and from the fruit trees? It would be great if you did an article, but if not, would love to get your opinion. Thanks, Josh. Oh, Josh, Josh, Josh. Deer, deer, deer. That has been a long-running hate relationship with me for a long time. Uh, how to how to handle deer destroying your your hard work on the farm especially your garden and so forth welcome to my world let me give you my perspective on dealing with deer the the pest of deer first of all hunt and kill as many as you legally can that's one of the best things you can do to you know try and control those numbers but if if you don't have time or you're more into the farming side then that you could lease your farm to someone who does want to hunt and make a little money on the side to support your farming habit. You know, your fencing and your animal feed and so forth. And you don't have to lease it to a bunch of people. Just find somebody that's really, really interested and say, look, I got a great spot for you. However many acres you got, I'll set you up right there. That is a good way to make money for your farm. Just find out what the going rate is in your area for leasing, you know, per acre for deer hunters and maybe cut them a little deal, you know, to, to keep them there and to keep them interested. Secondly, check your um, game and fish laws for your particular state or area. Some states are uh, give you a permit to actually shoot them out of your garden or out of your crops and so forth. So you might check that as well. Next, as far as keeping deer out of your garden, you've probably heard all the tricks, you know, uh, taking hair from a barber shop, scattering it around the field, uh, pie plates uh, in the air, CDs, DVDs that are spinning in the air, wind chimes, uh, putting cans at various, you know, empty cans at various locations around the garden and uh, using, you know, using the restroom in those cans. Whirly gigs. Hey, I know where you can get a few of those. Parking your truck or your vehicle near the garden, moving it around, leaving the radio on, putting a radio in your garden and leaving it going 24 hours. Scarecrows, I'm gonna tell you something. All right, this is another little gardening secret. All of those things work for a little while until deer get used to them. They really do. Hungry deer soon overcome their nervousness about you know, whatever shiny thing is blowing in the air or whatever smell, those things work. So, you know, pick your favorite, use them, but you're going to have to keep changing them up and, and, and doing different things, alternating back and forth, keeping the deer wondering what's going on, what's going to scare me next. By the way, if you haven't, uh, you feel free to read my article on building the traditional scarecrow. There's some good tips in there about, you know, moving it around and keeping it, keeping them wondering. Now, having said all that, Dogs can be one of the best weapons in fighting deer on the farm, especially the right dog. This is my daughter's new little dog, Jolene. Say hi, Jolene. Hello. How are you? How, how are you doing? Hi there. How are y'all? A good dog is hard to find. I happen to have uh, Jack. You've probably seen Jack on the show. Jack is a half boxer, half walker hound combination, which... I think it's the boxer in him that really, really hates deer. So he's been a, he's earned his dog food over the years, kind of keeping deer at a distance from the yard. He probably hates deer as much as I do, and that's quite a feat. And then the the other dogs that we've acquired you know, over time, they kind of they kind of copy one another and they take on each other's traits. They learn from the others. So a lot of the other dogs have learned from Jack over the years and. The, the problem with deer actually getting in, getting in our garden has actually decreased over the last few years. I, I hope that continues. Now, if your garden is quite a distance from your house, you could put a dog on a running line. You just gotta make sure they got, you know, water. Make sure they're safe if you're putting them on a running line near the garden if it's away from the house. You may not even have to have the dogs there during the day, just have them on a running line at night 
and maybe every other night to keep the deer wondering. And you wouldn't have to keep the dog out there all season, you know, obviously. Um, you could just put it out there during those times where something is ripening, like corn or whatever, or where the peas are starting to ripen for that short period of time, uh, and, and so that the deer are, you know, deterred from being there. One thing I've found that works very, very well, and that is, it is high tech, are uh, infrared motion sensors that are designed for driveways. People put them on their driveway and when the car comes past, um, it sends a signal to a receiver in your home that has an alarm. It's kind of like a doorbell for your driveway. And so when a car comes in, it lets you know in your home something. Same can be true for deer because they're you know, causing motion and they set the sensor off you could put those sensors uh, in the garden. If you're like me, the deer generally enter from one of two sides. You can put one sensor on this side along the fence, pointing along the fence, and the other sensor on the other side. That way, if they're getting in from you know either side, you'll know. And you, I put that um, receiver in a drawer right next to my bed and, and kind of on low because you know, don't want to wake my wife up. And that way I can know at night actually when they're out there rather than having a gang camera and I only know like a day or two later when I see the picture of the deer having you know, eaten the entire garden, which is kind of useless. I want to know when they're there at the moment so that I can get up and, you know, deal with it, dispatch them. The only, the only drawback with the motion sensors is it also lets you know uh, when your cat is using a restroom in your garden, which you know, I guess that's useful to know, but not at one o'clock in the morning, not for me. Then there is electric fence, also another modern innovation. And, you know, deer jump fences, you know, um, but there is one electric, one style of electric fence I have personally found that worked all year and kept them out of a sorghum field that had a lot of peas planted in it. It kept them out all summer long. And it's really simple, it's relatively inexpensive. And basically, it's two hot wires, uh, one of them is, uh, you know, imagine nose, nose high to a deer is about, you know, somewhere right in there. Well, the inner fence, one wire is slightly below nose high to a deer and one of them is slightly uh, above nose high to a deer, maybe about this tall, so that's the top one. And then 30 to 36 to f inches out away from that fence is a whole nother fence, which, um, it has one hot wire and that hot wire splits the difference between the two hot wires on the inner fence. And that's, again, that's about 30 to 36 inches away from this fence. You say, well, two fences, isn't that overkill? Well, uh, if it were, you know, a conventional fence where you're spending a lot of money, but, you know, we're just talking about one hot wire or poly tape or poly wire, whatever you want to use. I use galvanized. Um, most of the time I use 17 gauge wire. 14 is a little thicker, either one of those work fine. And the beauty is you really don't need a lot of post. I mean, you can do a 30 foot or maybe even more stretch from post to post. So you're not talking about a lot of post, T-post if you wanna use T-post or if you just wanna drive uh, stakes in the ground. All that's gotta do is hold that wire. You're, the serious uh, posts need to be on your corners, your four corners. Uh, and you can brace those just as long as they hold that wire. And uh, the the beauty of this is that a deer, it doesn't sense, it evidently doesn't sense depth perception very well. And so it can't tell how far it needs to jump and it, it won't jump something it doesn't know. In most instances, you know, there's weird deer out there, but in most instances they won't jump something they're nervous about. So they can't tell how far away that second fence is and they can't jump between them because then they'd have to jump sideways. There's not enough room for them to be straight on in the middle of that fence. So they won't jump either. Um, and they get nose, you know, they nose up to it and feel it's hot and that freaks them out. Even. Anyway, it worked for us, kept them out um, all summer long. And that's, you know, one of the best electric fences you can do. Now, beyond that, you're, you're, you spend a lot of money to keep deer out of an area. My father used to weld um, another T-post, weld a T-post on top of another T-post to get an eight foot length out of it. And he would put a woven wire on the bottom and barbed wire on the top part. And I've seen people do two sets of woven wire. That's an eight foot fence. And there are a few athletic Olympic 
uh, qualifying deer that can actually jump that. So it's not exactly foolproof, but it's better. It's a whole lot better than nothing. And if you've got a fence or something that is doing a decent job, but it's not, you know, completely foolproof or completely deer proof as you'd like for it to be. One little tip is that you can till up uh, little areas outside the fence where the deer can get to and just go ahead and plant something for them that they love, like, um, you know, purple hull peas or something like that, and just give it to them. And that way, um, hopefully, the, it'll, you know, get it out of their system. They can n browse on that uh, through the season and not go to the trouble of jumping that and getting in to your good stuff. As for protecting fruit trees, um, you've seen, probably seen on, on my video about the apple tree, heirloom apple trees. Uh, the best method I've seen is just a uh, welded wire fence sections that you can take, um, maybe six foot long is enough, and you, uh, you bend them around, form a s cylinder, um, tie them together, you know, wire them together there at the ends and place that over the young apple whip or whatever maybe put a top on it if they if it's low enough they can reach in and eat the top put a top on it so they can't uh, nibble it too bad from either side and then stakes at the bottom so that they can't move that cylinder over that seems to work well at least until the apple tree starts to grow take the top off it starts to grow and there's enough height that the deer might nibble on the branches around the edges but not they can't you know nibble enough foliage that they could kill the tree and I have heard, you know, some people in winter, you know, there might be a danger with a deer eating the bark or rabbits eating the bark. You might still need the cages for winter. winter. I haven't had a problem yet with them eating the bark. They, they'll nibble the branches so they can't really kill the tree, and that's what you want. Hey, maybe you'd like to join in the discussion with your own insights, the things you've done that you've had success with in keeping deer out of the garden. Just... Um, put it in the comment section below. Or maybe you've got a question about how to keep deer out or deer doing this or that. Put that question down below in the comment section. It could be you've got a question on a whole nother topic relating to another video on Farmhands Companion channel. Go to that video and leave your question below in the comment section of that video. And we'll try to answer, if it's a good question, we'll try to answer it on upcoming Q&A episodes. And remember, share these videos. That helps the channel so very much. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate you watching. And I'm Paul Mack. We'll talk at you next time. Now, having said all that, dogs can be actually the best weapon in... Hey, where are you going? Hey. I'm doing a show here.